Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to give you an update on everything going on with DC Comics and Warner and what we believe will be the eventual shutdown of DC Comics as a comic book publisher. Uh, you know, that's not a unique position to take. A lot of people have been talking about that, including Ethan Van Skyver, who used to work for DC for years and has insiders coming to him and telling him that they are currently prepping the company for sale. And anyone who's really been reading the tea leaves knows that DC Comics means, frankly, it means jack shit to Warner Media at this point. The characters have value because they can make movies out of them or whatever, but it seems like they are kind of systematically shutting down parts of the DC Comics machine, sort of like, uh, you know, when a body shuts down and, you know, the kidneys go and, and then the liver goes and then eventually you stop breathing and then your brain shuts off. Yeah, that's kind of what's going on here. Kind of the slow, long, slow death of DC as we knew it. Uh, you know, first of all, we had Dan DiDio getting gone. We had uh, plans changing, editorial plans changing at DC. We had uh, the DC streaming app recently. It looks like it's, it's going to be shut down pretty soon. Uh, they stopped their, uh, what was it, DC Daily or whatever show they were doing. It looks like they're going to roll that into HBO Max. Uh, we had DC trying very hard to make some money, I think, to justify their existence and doing an end run around Diamond Distributors trying to get their books out to comic book shops using uh, two new distributors because they have to, to have to sell books. They have to sell them. But now we have DC Direct is no longer going to work through Diamond either. This is coming from CBR. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, some updates on the AT&T debt. And we're going to talk about how the friendly comic book access media, the comic book blogs are finally, finally admitting, catching on. They're admitting uh, that, you know, YouTube might be right. YouTube might be right after all. The end might be near. Uh, so this is coming from CBR. DC Direct ceases distribution through Diamond. Effective immediately. They're not going to just phase it out like they did with comics. DC Direct, which handles collectibles based on DC's comic book characters, has cut ties with Diamond. The comics industry saw a seismic shift when DC decided to cut ties with Diamond distributors. While DC and Diamond have temporarily extended their partnership, temporarily, one arm of DC has decided to cut the cord entirely. That's DC Direct, which sells collectibles based on DC characters. It stopped distributing through Diamond effective immediately. After careful consideration of the current distribution model, we have determined that we need to provide a more comprehensive global solution by transitioning the distribution of DC Direct products to a new partner base. What? Who? 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 DC said in a statement, DC Direct will be distributing through Lunar Distribution, Entertainment Earth. This does not surprise me at all. Sideshow collectibles and USC comic distributors. DC Direct won't fulfill any orders for products scheduled to be on the market after May 1st. However, they will still process and fulfill reorders of previously purchased products. Diamond Comics Distribution and its offshoot Diamond Select Toys are the largest distributor of comic books and collectibles in North America. That might change. <laughs> Other companies that distribute include uh, Marvel, Image, Boom, Dark Horse, IDW, etc. Diamond has recently resumed shipping products to stores after the COVID-19 pandemic halted orders. Diamond cut and run on comic shops and cut and run bailed out on publishers. They left companies like DC with no other option, in my opinion, than to find a workaround because, you know, they were the weakest link. Uh, and DC is desperate. They're desperate because Warner Media is cutting like crazy. Uh, here, this just came out today. A uh, friend of ours, CCG, sent this to us this morning. AT&T CFO John Stevens on uh, HBO Max, shuttered production, asset sales and debt. Mostly they're talking about HBO Max, how it seems to be doing pretty okay so far. It'd be a huge, huge help, uh, HBO Max, if you would come out with a Roku version or an Amazon uh, Fire TV version. It's kind of a pain in the ass to watch it on the computer or on my phone, but I digress. We get down to the bottom and they're talking about how, you know, the movies are delayed and that's cutting into their bottom line. 
But here we go, addressing AT&T's massive debt load of over $150 billion, a big chunk assumed in the acquisition of Time Warner. Stevens noted the giant telco has been paying it down gradually and has been able to sell notes at attractive interest rates, a vote of confidence by the credit market. It will continue to cull its portfolio for asset sales following deals, former or pending sales, uh, including CME at stake in Hulu, Hudson Yards offices, uh, some real estate, etc. We are constantly, we are constantly going through our portfolio. We have five hundred billion dollar, a five hundred billion dollar balance sheet. Finding one or two percent to monetize should be expected every year. Uh, the company is reportedly looking to unload Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, that's their video game division, which Wall Street said could be worth four to five billion dollars. Of course, you know they've got the uh, the Lego Movie, they've got the Harry Potter games, Mortal Kombat's been a big hit for them. Uh, they're looking to unload that, and that's profitable. That is profitable. Now, we had another friend send this to us that Hollywood is trying to get out of the video game business. This is going to be interesting because I think you can trace all of the, uh, I guess, the quote unquote wokeness in games and comics. Uh, I think you can trace it all back to the Hollywood influence. As soon as Hollywood got involved in video games, as soon as Hollywood got involved in comic books, you know, because they're getting involved in these things because they want to strip mine them for movies and you know hollywood now is getting involved in anime so they're bringing their hollywood sensibilities and their hollywood politics to what used to be more kind of niche uh pastimes right and we're kind of paying for that now because we had a lot of gamers a lot of comic book collectors walk away uh we had a lot of tabletop gamers walk away we're gonna i, I believe before it's all said and done probably have a lot of uh anime fans walk away from at least the dubs um, I think it's, it's, you know, people just do not want the Hollywood politics injected into their entertainment, but it looks like they're getting out of video games. And they talk about how Disney unloaded their video game division a few years ago. They shut it down and now they just send everything out to EA because it's easier. They don't want to mess around with video games. I mean, these games cost as much to make as movies in some cases, and they don't want to take the hit. They rather just focus on uh, printing money and licensing out these IPs to companies that want to take a chance on trying to make product, I think. Uh, so they're talking about Warner Interactive. Warner Interactive is the latest unit on the block as studio conglomerates favor licensing and revenue sharing deals. And this is important because this is probably what's going to happen to DC Comics as a comic book publisher and this is potentially what could happen to marvel comics too in fact marvel comics i believe was dipping a toe into licensing with idw and i had heard through the grapevine like three or four years ago that that was probably the direction that marvel was going to go in long term because disney doesn't want to be a comic book publisher they don't publish any other comic books uh, they license all of their comics out to comic book dedicated comic book publishers and they pay them for the rights to, to you know make Mickey Mouse comics or Disney fairy comics or or whatever. And Disney's looking at Marvel comics like why why are we doing this? You know, like we've got the best people. We pulled the best people, and and frankly, most of the movies have very little to do with the comic books anyway. Nobody's really basing comics on any any of the new stuff. It's they're repurposing old stuff or they're just making it up whole cloth so yeah from a business perspective it makes sense you can get rid of all those employees and let another company deal with the hassle of trying to distribute comic books in this market uh they said according to the hollywood reporter it may soon be game over for video game studios owned by big entertainment companies with the m a market picking up again after a pandemic spurred lull at t is looking to offload warner brothers interactive entertainment the gaming division owned by the entertainment studio as first reported by cnbc on june 12th now here's where it could get really interesting because we're seeing a lot of people leave rooster teeth too that also is owned by at t and we saw them uh, lay a bunch of people off last year we've got you know tons of people founders leaving rooster teeth now because now that things are starting to open up again, meat might be back on the menu, boys. It might be. That means that companies that were going to be sold before the pandemic, that maybe were put those uh, sales were put on hold, that might kick back into gear. And there's another company that AT&T was reportedly looking to unload before the pandemic. That would be Crunchyroll, right? Crunchyroll. They were going to sell Crunchyroll to Sony 
owner of Funimation, they were supposedly going to sell Crunchyroll off to Sony before the pandemic, but the pandemic threw a wrench into it. I would not be surprised if they take another look at Crunchyroll. Okay, this is verified information. Uh, verified information that they were in talks to sell Crunchyroll. This is coming from the information, uh, which is an insider, kind of a venture capital uh, subscription-based publication. Uh, they have a lot of inside baseball. Uh, they do check out. We actually have to pay for a subscription to this site to be able to read the stories on here. But um, they were, yeah, they were going to sell off Crunchyroll before the pandemic. And with John Stevens making these comments that they're going to constantly go through the portfolio and that they were going to sell off Crunchyroll, I have to wonder if they're not going to take another look at that because they're already talking about selling off the video game division, which is very profitable. It's very profitable for them. A hell of a lot more profitable than uh, DC Comics. So this is interesting. Comics Beat, which for months, years, has been saying that the comic book industry is fine, that uh, you shouldn't believe those rumors about DC Comics possibly getting sold. Could they be waking up a little bit yeah it sounds like they are because they're talking about the sale they're talking about the game company uh you know warner interactive being for sale and if you scroll down here what could this mean for dc comics they're saying the same things that youtubers including us including ethan van skyver have been saying for months years uh with the division sale AT&T may simply see a way to shave $4 billion off its massive amount of debt. The news doesn't necessarily predict the conglomerate's future plans. Still, if AT&T is ready to leave one industry behind, who's to say it won't leave another? Uh, to go to the effort of signing deals with two new distributors, DC Comics doesn't appear to be going anywhere for the time being. But if sales numbers don't bounce back after the pandemic, AT&T might cut its losses, uh, save the headache of running the number two comic book publisher and profit by giving IDW or Dark Horse a license to make comics. Uh, yeah. You know, from a financial, this is everything we've been saying, from a financial standpoint, the decision could make sense. For a corporation as big as AT&T, comic book sales are a fraction of its revenue. It's, it's not even a drop in the bucket. Again, this is everything I have heard from the Disney publishing side, and I've made some contacts over there. I used to work on Disney Comics for like 15 years, is that Disney, too, is looking at getting out of publishing comic books. It's not profitable enough for them. People are like, well, they made a little bit of profit. No. And the pandemic was just the the, the nail in the, the casket. Uh, these Both of these companies have been looking at getting rid of their comic book publishing operations for years because it's it's a horse and buggy. It's a horse and buggy to them. They don't care. Uh, they really don't care. So we'll see what happens. As far as them switching distributors, I have a feeling that is actually DC Comics. That has nothing to do with AT&T. I think that is a last ditch effort on DC's part because Warner's probably like, well, if you guys can't even sell comic books, that's it. We're calling it quits. We're, we're done. We're going to pull the plug on DC. And they're like, wait, 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 but wait, there's more. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna you know sign with these two new distributors and that's that's how we're gonna make some money. So I think they got to prove that they're going to make money. And I have to wonder if it's not going to be like by the end of the fiscal year, by the end of the quarter, like how much money have you guys uh, actually made? And is it worth keeping DC Comics around as a publisher? If they're not going to make their own games based on DC characters. Again, I think uh, AT&T will keep the DC characters. I just think they'll shut down the comic book publishing division and they'll just have whoever buys uh, Warner Interactive will just make their Superman and Batman games or Mortal Kombat games. And then whoever wants to do the comic books, they can do the comic books. But I think Warner will keep the characters. Everybody seems to think they're going to sell the characters off. I don't think so. There's too much money be, to be made uh, you know, down the road with uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. They're not going to do that. But they will absolutely, at some point, just shut down DC Comics. It doesn't make sense. You know, they're having a fan event. Again, this feels like they're desperately trying to justify their existence. That, in, in those HBO Max promo comics, like, hey, guys, we're worth it to you. We're worth it to you. Uh, comics are worth it. We can promote your HBO Max. That's what we can do. We'll throw Jim Lee on one of these god-awful... Uh, promo comics and then they're gonna they're gonna have their own little convention because San Diego Comic Con got canceled so they're gonna do their own uh, little promo convention online convention for Wonder Woman 2 and Lucifer the Snyder Cut 
Harley Quinn and all that jazz. So they're they're desperately trying to prove their value, I think, uh, to to AT and T. And I think a lot of companies are going to be doing that. I think Rooster Teeth, I think, is going to be time up for them uh, pretty soon. Bernie Burns left. We had uh, multiple people leave the company over the last couple months. I think they see the writing on the wall. Uh, you know, Warner Media is going to cut. They have to cut. And it's going to be brutal. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think as we go into, I'd say by the end of summer, we're going to start seeing some fire sales. And again, watch Crunchyroll because uh, they were apparently going to sell them off before. The only thing that saved them was the pandemic. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.